You're listening. I just, I just don't care. Look, if you're 300 pounds, then you are a monster, and I don't want you to talk. Welcome back to This Is A Work. My name is David Hensley. I'm the owner and creative director of Long Walk Productions, and I am here to introduce your host, David Two Dogs Hayes. Zombies? Freaking zombies. I don't know what you're talking about. The reboot of Zombies <laughs> Ate My Neighbors is actually pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, David Hensley, and welcome to Rock Hill, South Carolina's only premier wrestling pay-per-view podcast. This is a work with me, as always, my tag team partner, Chris, the fashion plate Barnes. I zombies. I can't believe Miz and Morrison are fucking dead. Yeah, well, not anymore. Now no, they're no, they're zombies. dead. They're dead to me. <laughs> they're undead to you. Yeah. That's... You're going to hear sounds of a commotion in a second. We, 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 <laughs> I, I was waiting on Rick Grimes to come out and do a run-in and... Negan's gonna come out with a baseball bat, and you're, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna counter program that tired shit with other tired shit. Yeah, well, <laughs> why not? <laughs> At this point, zombies. Look, I, let's okay. Let's be real here. Uh, the Twitter sphere is all a Twitter uh, about how this is the saddest thing that WWE has ever done okay it's not but i mean it's up there but it's will, not yeah but now yeah I, this is the top 10 sure um may i remind you that we had santino morella as a zombie for like a month where he came out as a freaking zombie <laughs> yeah so see it's not even the worst zombie related thing they've done right I mean, uh, <laughs> if I have learned anything from my time watching wrestling with you, it's that wrestling fans and apparently wrestling writers have a very short memory. No, oh, that's yeah. actually that's a that's that's a common uh, thought. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, that's something that like wrestler promo- promoters use. They try to they think, okay, it's been long enough, we can do this thing again. Yeah, they they actively yeah. follow that idea. Yeah, it it is. Um, and while attention spans can be short, I mean the internet doesn't forget. So no, they there are plenty of nerds such as myself that love to remind people. <laughs> well, let's talk about it. Um, no, if we must. WWE presents WrestleMania's backlash. I mean, if you couldn't figure out the subtext of what backlash meant before. It so, always follows WrestleMania. Yeah. And it's always meant to say, this is the fallout from WrestleMania. And, and wow, I, you know, I, I you know, I, I get that, you know, to a degree, wrestling fans are dumb. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> most, yeah. most, most sporting fans They're are. They're set in their ways. I, uh, Sports fans are always to a degree, no matter what sport. Yeah. But the, the idea that they're, they're not going to get it. That after all these years, the idea that you feel like you have to slap WrestleMania on this. Yeah, and and I do. I want to address the zombies. We'll get to to it. Um, <laughs> They're not the most insulting thing that happened that, that night in my book. No. Uh, let's start things off with the pre-show because the pre-show, I think, in, pre-show in my world, uh, had some controversy as well. We only had the one match. It was Sheamus versus Ricochet. Now, here's what I find that's interesting. This was supposed to be Sheamus versus Umberto Carrillo. Huh, why? Yeah. Uh, why, why the well, switch? Because they've been feuding for a while. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm, just, I'm saying, what, what, what prompted the switch? I don't know. Huh. But I think that was the reason for uh, Ricochet showing up in his uh, skinny jeans and dress shoes <laughs> instead sh- of his gear. <laughs> he showed up in an armless denim hoodie. Yeah. And uh, I, they're some good business casual slacks. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe he was just answering the open challenge. 
I think that's just, what it was supposed to be like. But I mean, if that's his run, that's just his walking around outfit. I'm worried. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll be honest, guys. Uh, I don't know if it was the best uh, match on the uh, card, but it was up there. It was really good. It was a damn fine match. Um, I personally think I I would have put a couple other things at the bottom of the card, which we'll talk about. Yeah, but it was a, I mean it was a fun opener. It was. It was great. I gave it three and a half stars. Sure. Um, and it looks like they're even going to start a uh, a rivalry with the aftermath. Uh, Sheamus goes over. It was a non-title match. Um, Sheamus he, goes he over. Puts on his his coat and his hat, which was weird. And he's celebrating. He's no wrestler has ever done that except Taker when he retired. Look, he's proud. He's he's proud. He's he's from 1905 <laughs> right now. <laughs> He's ro- he's rocking the the gangs of New York look right, and Ricochet <laughs> decides I'm gonna rip the coat off, put the hat on, and mock you, and do a little shimmy shimmy dance, and then leave. And I, all right, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Feuds have been started over less. All right, <laughs> you're you're absolutely right. <laughs> I had a feud. Uh, one one of the biggest feuds that I ever had when I was wrestling started. <sighs> Because I knocked off a Texans cowboy hat. Well, that's a grave offense, dog. It, it is. <laughs> I don't want, know if I want you in my studio anymore. After that. <laughs> that's I, just 10 gallons of trouble right there. <laughs> I was wearing a hat, too, so I don't know if it, that should make it better. What kind of hat? It, 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 was, it was a cowboy hat. Oh. Yeah. We were both cowboys. Well, basically, I mean, I think you got off... Like just having to wrestle them, yeah. they could have just called you out to the to the main road at high noon. Well, <laughs> you know that that did kind of. I'm pretty up sure that's still legal under Texas law code. <laughs> that's it falls under the Need Killing Act. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, this is a three and a half match. Sheamus goes over. Uh, we've got a new feud, maybe with Sheamus and Ricochet. I just want to see Ricochet doing something. He's a he's a good hand and for them to keep shoving him to the back cuz they don't know how to how to work with somebody like that. I mean, is he main event status? I, th- I he's, he's maybe. He's a ways from that, I think. But he showed he showed off, especially with Sheamus, another great, you know, another great talent. He's got what it takes to make to make something happen. Yeah, absolutely. He's he's been showing that off. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it's Whenever again they let him. Uh, uh, the writers are doing him a disservice. Um, moving into the actual card, we That's, started things. I will say the writers are doing he or she a disservice is going to be a running theme. <laughs> it it has been for several years now. Yeah. Um, remember when they came when they came out at the end of the year and said, "Hey, we know things have been tough. We're gonna make things a lot better." And then they, well, they for, well one they forgot to go wink. Yeah. And then, <laughs> or uh, show us that they had their fingers crossed. Or uh, well, they may as well have just gone. And this time we mean it because they did nothing different. Right. Ah. <clears throat> <sighs> But anyway, <laughs> so we have a uh, three-way match for the Raw Women's Championship. Um, champion Rhea Ripley uh, versus Asuka and Charlotte Flair with her uh, fresh new uh, plastic surgery. So, uh, I don't know. There was, there was some thoughts on, on, on the... On the surgery. Not to mention her Cruella themed ring gear. See, I like the gear. Yeah, but without the coat, it quickly became a series of cow puns in our in that's, our circle of friends. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> because that's what it looked like. Yeah, it did. Um Charlotte did great. Mm-hmm. Asuka, as usual, did great. Rhea, uh, Rhea did great. Uh yeah. this is these are three Fine, fine women that uh, that really showed their skill. I, I enjoyed the match. 
Um, couple flubs here with Charlotte. She tried to take a page from Roman Reigns and stack. Oh, uh, that Oscar. And I said she planked. Yeah, because <laughs> she. But that gave us the wonderful face she made after the two count. <laughs> Because she just has this weird look at the ref, like, really? (laughs) I said she planked because because, uh, when Ricochet was making fun of Seamus, he quickly dabbed. He did. (laughs) (laughs) And as we all know, a little dab will do you. I will hit you. (laughs) But, yeah, yeah, that was a weird pin. It's in that, that wheelhouse of... The kind of arrogant pen or the, you know, the the heel kind of like, I'm going to make this look easy kind of thing. Right. But at the same time, it just looks so goofy. See, I liked uh, what you said that night. You said should have done the Jericho. Should have done the Jericho. One boot on, flex. flex. Come on, baby. <laughs> that and, was... and every time someone rolled the shoulder or kicked out of it, he looked surprised. It was yeah. great. It was, <laughs> he looked, no, well, no, no, he looked angered that they would dare to kick out. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this uh, I gave this match. Uh, Rhea Ripley retains. Um, you know, uh, there's really not a lot to say here. It was uh, a. It, I will say it was a surprise kind of finish because it kind of came out of nowhere. But at the same time, it really does solidify that she's like a an X factor. She's like a really, she can just kind of you know seal the deal whenever she can. She yeah, absolutely. And uh, the thing about it is. Uh, I'm I'm glad Rhea showed up to this because the the past couple of times that she's been on Raw, she hasn't been looking great. Mm-hmm. Um, turns out I, we we found her fatal flaw. Uh, the Raw writing staff. Well, I think that's everybody's <laughs> fatal flaw, but uh, not not great on the mic. Okay, well, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, she just she cut decent promos yeah. when she was in NXT. Uh, but now you're being handed a script, and someone's putting words in your mouth. And if they're not the words that that seem like they would naturally come out of your mouth, they're gonna sound bad. Yeah. Uh, so I think I think that's where we're at with her. Because I'm betting that's it. I'm betting it's just they're writing words for her to say, and not words that you think her character should say. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing when Bailey was mm-hmm. uh, uh, taking cues. It was just. The, the script writers were so bad with her mm-hmm. and she couldn't get her point across without sounding like she was reading from a cue card. Uh, but uh, so, yeah, I gave this match two and a half uh, really just for story and uh, story wise. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, they went about 15 minutes and then just went home with it. Um, Moving into our next match was Rey Mysterio sans Dominic. Well, why was that, dogs? Because Dominic got beat up with a sofa. Yes, their opponents for that night: the <laughs> Rude, Robert Rude, and uh, and <laughs> Dolph Ziggler, Dolph the Z- Dirty Dogs, the Dirty Dogs. I hadn't seen that name until Sunday. Yeah, <laughs> and the rooms for rent. <laughs> and well it is just like they they attack him and there just so happens to be a sofa saran wrapped nearby mm-hmm. so they decide to toss that on him but they obviously toss it in the way where the where he's in between like the seat cushions and the back or yeah. so there's like it just lands on him it doesn't hurt him. yeah but he ends up in the trainer room with a helpful uh skeletal anatomy chart um <laughs> We're going. It's all, I think it's like his ribs were hurting. Yeah, that he was selling the ribs. Yeah, uh, a little too much for my blood, but yeah. that's okay. Um, so Ray looks strong in this match, holding out. Ray looked like he was twenty years younger. Yeah, uh, this was very well done. Mm-hmm. You know, it started out raise a house of fire. Yep, and but you know the numbers game gets to him and. You know, Ziggler and Root are so freaking good. Yep. They can, yep. they they just, they, they kept double teaming and double teaming. And now we've got the sympathetic baby face in Rey Mysterio. 
Uh, in full never say die mode because he held out for almost like eight tenths of that match. Oh yeah, on and his own. In fact, um, I think he held out a little bit too long. Maybe yeah. I believe there. I I started guessing that too. I was like, I, because of just how long it was going. Because it was uh, getting uncomfortable, and you could not, start to tell that they were starting to call spots, yeah, which is not something they usually do. They've got it. Because there was just a point, just as wa- as I was watching it, I didn't wasn't keeping track of time, but it's just the moment where it felt like this has gone on too long without Dominic limping. Because I knew, you know, watching wrestling, he's like, you know, he's gonna come out and since they're the faces, he's gonna come out and give a valiant effort, sure. even though injured. So I was like, wait, why isn't he out here yet? And I, and I just like, and I just said out loud, I think someone missed a cue. Yeah, uh, and I'll tell you, the main giveaway for that for me was. Uh, you may have saw it, you may not have. Uh, they did the above camera angle from way up in the cheap she- seats, which they have never done in the Thunderdome ever. No, I did miss that. I didn't and realize. And they it. left it up there huh. for an uncomfortable amount of time. And that's what was telling me is like, they had to get the cameras off of them and get them away from the hot mics mm. uh, that were that were there so that they could figure something out because somebody's clear. Uh, Dominic has clearly missed his mark. Something happened. Yeah. They had to get it back around to a point where Dominic would go back, would get out there. Right. And at one point, if you start looking at it, you can see that the ref is clearly talking to somebody. Mm-hmm. He's making it out to be where like he's talking to Dominic, uh, not Dominic or Ray that's laying on the ground selling, but it's actually, talking on his headset Hmm. uh so yeah i eventually dominic comes out selling does the slow uh thing Uh, ray doesn't want him to get in the ring because he's injured won't tag him in he finally he just kind of falls into the corner and dominic tags himself in which is the see it's acceptable this way yeah yeah no this it made sense the way he did it yeah because it's like because Ray, because Ray wasn't going to let it happen, and then Ray falls back, and Dominic took his opportunity. Yeah, and he comes in, handles business. Eventually, once again, the numbers get to him because Dominic's injured, and uh, super bad. Those ribs hurt so much. Yeah, yeah, the the sofa king. <laughs> I'm I'm not I'm not going to finish it. I'm I know. just, uh, <laughs> but uh, so yeah. Uh, well, the the go home of this match is uh, they they rally. We send Dominic up to the top rope. Beautiful frog splash onto his ribs. Onto his ribs, <laughs> gets the pin, and we have new SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Yep. Um, apparently, this is the first time that we've had a father and son tag team duo to win the championship. Hmm. Um, I I had to think about that for a second too. Uh, I thought maybe SmackDown specific because I feel like that might have happened, but I don't know. I don't know. Well, the I'm trying to think of the uh, father son thing that happened, and the only I've only got just a couple of people. Yeah, there's only like a you couple got of names. Vince and Shane. Right, that never happened. No, even and they you weren't got that crazy. David and Ivan Putzky. Maybe, and that never happened. And why would it? Ew. I thought That's maybe <laughs> I thought maybe it could have happened once with either the Ortons or the Rhodeses, but I guess not. Oh God, no! Not okay. not, not with that broken arm. Not if, <laughs> you kidding me? You're right. What was I thinking? <laughs> so uh, yeah, um, I really really enjoyed this match. Yeah, I well, like the uh, sympathy going into it. Mm-hmm. I like the fact that uh, we're going to give Ray one more tag team uh, title match, and we're going to run with this. We're going to take one more run with it. Let's see if we can get six months out of it. Uh, I I gave it a three. Uh, Moving into our next match, our Lumber Zombie match. Well, it's introduced. We don't know who the Lumberjacks are, but conveniently, Johnny Drip Drip happens Mm -hmm. upon what I've never seen before, which is a room for the the match's Lumberjacks. Yeah, which is called a locker room. (laughs) Yes. 
a generalized. That should have been. I was like, I was too busy making fun of it to be like, "There's something up here." <laughs> they don't do this when there's an actual lumberjack match. <laughs> He opens the door, and we see the fiend's red light. Yeah, the, some, the mood lighting sets in. The fog, and then you see some zombies. He shuts the door, and he... No, he doesn't. Oh, he doesn't? He just leaves. Yeah, and, they wouldn't have made it out to the ring if he just shut the door. And uh, <laughs> and he goes to tell Miz. Miz doesn't believe him. Rightfully so. <laughs> and... <laughs> And he, he says, this is one of your mo- weird metaphysical motivation speeches. I'm not I'm not going in for it this time. And, and then they just go to the ring. Well, here come the zombies. Yeah. They, yeah. It's, the, the zombies come out last. Because, yeah. And they they have a whole little pre- like every apparently every like everyone in production knew about the zombies because they had their own little entrance for them and then you have what what's the new announcer ahmed what's i don't remember the, he what a you know i thought there is not an announcer out there that i could hate more than michael cole but this jackass i first of all uh, yes i'll i'll briefly take you through why i hate him so much all right um he he! First, much like Michael Cole, he can't get any moves right. Uh, a few weeks ago, um, Strowman is doing a match, and he does the Strowman Express. You know, run around the ring. It's literally not a move. He just runs around the ring. And what's the guy? I think the guy's name is Abed or uh, Ahmed or something like that. And he he screams out, "We're gonna need a bigger boat!" And I'm. So you feel how quiet it is out? Yeah, that's no, the same thing. Well, I got quiet because once you said Abed, I, my mind immediately went Colin Abed on the pay per view. <laughs> no, I wish it was that Abed <laughs> be because great. it would be awesome. It would be. I would but, love yeah. to have that Abed from. Community. I see. I see what you mean. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. You can make the pop culture references, but they have to be germane to the thing that's happening. Yeah. He. Uh, well then. Well, he I starts mean, explaining to us what a zombie is. I missed this because I wasn't listening to him. At I missed it too, but when I went to watch it again and I heard that, I uh, honestly, because I was going to at least talk about whether or not, because I was so distracted uh-huh. by the zombies, Yeah, I didn't really watch the damn match. Right. I was... Uh, uh, so I, I was going to go back and watch it again today. I believe, the, I believe the general air on Sunday night was, oh, this is happening. <laughs> and then when he said, when he starts going into a detailed definition of what a zombie is, I'm like, I couldn't even watch it. So um, <laughs> I, I hate. Why has he not been fired yet? I mean, mm. it's just, again, it's like. We let Samoa Joe go for this guy. I, mean, I here's the thing is like I I love the weirdness of pro wrestling and I love I'm I'm perfectly willing to be like yeah that the that's not a guy in a turkey costume that's that's the gobbledygooker he is a sure. giant turkey <laughs> and <laughs> sure came out, came out of an egg twenty years ago yeah and, uh, sure uh, that yeah that's uh, that's a boogeyman with worms in his mouth he's gonna smash a clock on his head and wrestle people yeah I, I am down with this mm-hmm. this is insulting. A, a, a little bit, it's if just, you look. But, but but I will say, the match between Miz and Damian Priest is good. It's a good match. I'm going to have to take your word for it. I, again, yes, I understand. And I was present. I was saying, looking at the minus, screen. Minus zombie spots, they put on a good match. I, I don't think... But the whole zombie setup could have been something fun, because it's, it's a cross promotion with with the 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 Zack Snyder zombie film that's coming out. Sure, absolutely. It could have been fun. They could have not in but it just up and down the way they presented it insults the intelligence. Yeah. Um it, it, it did. And like at least when they did the KFC ads with uh people with people wrestling as Colonel Sanders, they did it tongue in cheek. Like, it, and it was fun. Yeah. Uh, this was yeah, no, you hit the nail on the head. This was insulting. Um, 
I couldn't uh, I, I couldn't concentrate on the match. I was distracted by the zombies. Um, apparently, Miz ended up uh, tearing his ACL for this. I mean, for this. For, for, uh, that's a year, man. You that's let, a year out. This guy who has done so much for the company and is a company man that he tries to put this over and he tears his ACL for this. Yeah. <sighs> so uh, for this and. Look, it's it's it, it wouldn't be so bad. I wouldn't be upset with it if it was just Miz and Morrison being Miz and Morrison, and that's fine and everything. But it's like you said that night, two months ago, he was WWE champion. He was, and now he's doing this. None. Come, come on, guys. If what. That's that's my biggest problem. If if you want to do zombies, look, we've got a fiend here that's impervious to pain, and he was set on fire, and he came back six months later, and you know, I mean, we can check our intelligence at the door with this, but come on, and and as and to do this to. To them, after they put all that hard work into with to the Bad Bunny tag match, like that, yeah. like Priest, Morrison, Miz, yeah, they 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 put in the work. They make that great. Bad Bunny did his part too, and then they come off of that, and then they they're put into this because they're now they're the guys who have to make any terrible shit look good for WWE. They did a a couple of weeks ago. They did a song. With Elias and Riker, and Priest came down and started throwing tomatoes at him with Bad Bunny, and it was—I mean, but uh, this uh, this is their reward for doing so good at WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah, for getting them good mainstream press. Zombies, freaking zombies. Yeah, I don't know. It here. Let me let me try and restructure this so it's it's less uh, embarrassing. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, it's like it comes time for the lumberjacks to come out, but they don't. Mm-hmm. But Miz, Miz and Morrison are like, don't don't worry, we got it covered. And then they wave out zombies. Yeah, and then but they're not actually. I mean, they're trying to be zombies, but they're just they're just clearly people they hired to pretend to be zombies. Here's an even better tie-in for you, since this is a uh, all promotion for Army of the uh, Army of the Dead, starring Dave Batista. True, true. Have the zombies make it all the way to the ring, and then you have fucking Dave Batista, formerly of the WWE, come out and be like, "Don't worry, guys, we got this." And he starts killing zombies, and we cut to the match. Here, interesting that you bring up Batista, because. Some people were so angry that they started angry tweeting him. Batista fired back saying, I didn't book this shit. I'm on a plane right now. <laughs> He's not even watching the, no. <laughs> the damn thing. Because he knows how WWE operates. Yeah. He knows that it's going to be the dumbest thing. And it's just my idea, Dave's idea, all of those... League's better. Now, I don't think they would have done the Batista thing because that would have cost way more money. But because mm. <laughs> he, he would have made them pay for him to show up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As well, he should have. <laughs> but it's just like, yeah. And then and then possibly my, if my idea had happened and then, you know, Damien Priest still wins, at least it could have still possibly ended with a thriller dance, which no one did. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we, we could have done that. I mean, it would have been extremely hokey and whatnot. But I mean. We could have sat. The, the person that I feel the worst for is Damian Priest. Yeah. He's, he came from NXT like a badass. Yeah. And he was a badass in NXT. And now he's chunking tomatoes at people. He's, super- he's hooking up with a, with, with a rapper named Bugs Bunny. Bad Bunny. Whatever. I don't care. It's And... <laughs> and and now he's in a match with zombies where they're eating Miz and Morrison. He, 
this is supposed to be the wave he's riding after doing all that hard work at WrestleMania. Yeah. Like, this is how they're supposed to be pushing him. <laughs> they better. They, they He needs a title now. Now, mm-hmm. I mean, after this, he's got, you got to, you can't just do this to, to a man. I mean, <laughs> come on. And Miz worked so hard to put this over. Yeah. He put himself on the shelf for about a year. And, you know, Miz, I know Miz doesn't care. Miz is, he has got the mindset of, I have the greatest job in yeah. the world. I don't care what people think of me. I have no problems uh, humiliating myself because I am a millionaire, bitches. So uh, I don't think any less of him after the match. I, I just, don't. I, just, I don't. You know, I just. But they worked so hard with what they had. I. I'm. I'm trying here to. <laughs> and I think rightfully everyone. On, I mean, everyone who's who's been hard on this match has been hard on the fact that this was what they came up with, not any of the work in the ring. Right. No, absolutely. And I wish I could talk about the work, but I don't. You don't remember. It no. was too distracting. The zombies were. Uh, for that, because it was so distracting, um, zero melters. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you can't even really grade it. No, I, well, no, I'm grading it. I'm giving it a zero <laughs> because the world hated it. Uh I wasn't happy. Uh, <laughs> Miz has a uh, Miz has a uh, is injured for it. And might be out for a year. Um, and Damian Priest has not benefited from this at all. Except maybe somebody will say, "Hey, we've had him doing some sh- silly shit since he got here. Let's give him the rub." The very cynical side of me thinks. Hey, we've had him do some very silly shit, and he seems to have worked it well. Let's have him keep doing silly shit. That's probably what's going to happen. That's that's the thing is like you you end up getting pigeonholed as the guy who can make this work, and yeah. so they just stop trying. Mm-hmm. I've had one guy uh, uh, that I listen to regularly uh, said that now he does a wrestling podcast as well. Mm-hmm. He actually went on record the other day saying, I'm not watching wrestling anymore (laughs) because of this. He said he stopped the pay-per-view. He said, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. He shut his podcast down. (laughs) Oh, wow. He actually crossed the the horizon that... Roger Ebert almost did with Suburban Commando. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Because <laughs> that was the movie that made Roger Ebert go, what am I doing? Yeah, and, you know, fair point. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, so moving into our next match, we don't have any humility here at This Is A Work, and, and we don't, and if we shut down the, well, Let's be honest. There's only like 20 of you that's listening anyway. So it's still your loss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're just going to keep going. Uh, well, all right. So moving into our next match, this is the uh, SmackDown Women's Championship. And we have our champion, Bianca Belair, versus, I can't even call her Aunt Bailey because this is new. Uh, this is just Bailey. Uh Again, I spent a good portion of this match trying to decipher what is on the front of her shirt now. Yeah. <laughs> and you know the thing about it is we I saw a close up of it. Yeah. Oh, I saw several. I did. And uh, you know, and I, you know, tried to blow it up a little bit. I still don't know oh. what it is. It I, is it is some abstract art on the front of her tights yeah. now. <laughs> uh this was a fantastic match. Oh yeah. I mean, this was this was match of the night, guys. I mean, it was great. Um, and I, I'll be honest with you, uh, a lot of Bianca fans are going to get mad at me here in a minute. Um, Bailey, Bailey outclassed Bianca in this. It was, I, I didn't really pick up on this. The first time I could sense, you know, something was different, something wasn't off. But so so when I watched it uh, the other night, uh, 
just watching Bailey and watching Bianca, it was blatantly obvious. Bailey just out wrestled her. And which makes this whole thing really confusing if you think about it. Um, the go home on this match, Bianca actually cheated to get the win. Technically, yes. Now, now I like to play heel, uh, yeah. uh, especially when we're doing the live events. You know, I you know I like to go heel with uh, some of the people that are there, and it's fun, and we all have a good time with right. it. And they, you know, they 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 bust my stones about it, and it's fun because we go you're back predictable. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like it's like you can set a watch to when dogs is gonna. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And but you know I, I'm being I'm, I'm not going heel this time I'm being very serious. The face of this match cheated to get the win, and it was very clear in this match that Bailey straight up outclassed Bianca. She outclassed the EST of the WWE. Well, I think it's just she's got the experience edge on her. Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe. But on top of that, I think there's a. I'm I'm gonna actually uh, steal your steal your gimmick for a second. Okay. Um, I can. T- I would technically she cheated, but honestly, I I've always been able to reconcile that thing, uh, that kind of thing with with faces is like, I it's like faces shouldn't cheat mm-hmm. first. <laughs> that's 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 my that's always been my thing. It's like okay, they started it. Yeah. You can finish it then, because technically Bailey did grab Bianca's hair to try and do something with it to her mm-hmm. before Bianca reversed it and really just used it as leverage on the leg. And after the match, uh, <laughs> Bailey actually goes over to Cole yes. and grabs his notes. And starts writing on there. And it's like, make sure you have this down. Bianca cheated to win. And I agree with Bailey. <laughs> I like, yeah. Well, that that makes me then that makes me think it's like, oh, this is entirely part of the story. Yeah. Especially because she's she went I, I was checking her Twitter and it's like that's uh, she's also been tweeting about it too. Which uh th- this was this was a great match. Yeah. There were so many really good spots. Bailey looked flawless oh, in, yeah. in this match. Um, Bianca looked good. Uh, I, I hate to, I hate to keep on well, this think, and I'm I, not trying to go heel. I'm, I know. Uh, she looked fine. She looked fine. This don't get me wrong. This was a great match. Bianca did not look championship worthy the other night i i think part of that is also just the the she, she's had more of the experience chasing the title and not being the champion right right and that's uh that's kind of how she looked that night and it's it was i uh, yeah but, it, but it, it i mean it is as bad as as much as it looked like that it can still work because it's like this she's a first time champion still still working you know working out the kinks Versus a w- Bailey, who was who's been a multiple time champion. True. It's like I think I think it is that that part of the what part of makes that story is the experience factor. Yeah. In any event, I think that we are not done with oh, this no. feud by a minute, uh, and I'm glad to see it because I want to see Bianca come up, and um, I like I said, I think this might have been match of the night. Uh, I gave this uh, Bianca does retain, and uh, I gave this through match cheating apparently through dirty cheating, <laughs> and I gave this match uh, three and a half Meltzers. Nice. Um, going to take us into our next one. Uh, this one also, uh, I, I wasn't expecting this to be as good as it was. Triple threat for the WWE Championship. Oh, yeah. Now, we have champion Bobby Lashley, who you guys, you've heard me talk smack about Lashley. Uh, Bobby Lashley has improved. 
improved leaps and bounds. Um, I dare say I'm a borderline fan now. Coming from I hate him and I don't want him anywhere around me to... Uh, <laughs> the kid's got something. <laughs> he still can't talk. Uh, but you know what? He's got MVP? <laughs> nah, depending on how much you like MVP, that's a plus or a minus. But, I, you know, but, it's something. But it is uh, a step above Bobby cutting his own promos. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's... Um, and, uh, you've got Braun Strowman... Uh, who's, I think, do I don't think he's championship material right now, but uh, he's you know definitely main event mm-hmm. or upper card. Oh yeah, status and Drew McIntyre, who I hate to say that I'm gonna I'm gonna piss a lot of people off tonight. I guess uh, I the, the Bloom's kind of off the rose uh, for for me with McIntyre. Uh, I think the honeymoon's over. <laughs> Uh, now don't get, this is not a, uh, disparaging thing about McIntyre. He did fantastic a Sunday. Um, all, all three participants. They did. Yeah. Did they really brought amazing. it. Amazing. This was a great, great, great match. I'm just saying, I think, um, I think McIntyre's gotten a little stale. I think maybe he should, should. Maybe maybe go away for a little while and come back. Are you saying he's a little slack and tire? A little slack and tire, yeah. <clears throat> maybe a little slack and tired. Dave, have I, me- <laughs> have I mentioned how much I love when you contribute? <laughs> Not recently. Mm, don't don't expect it then. <laughs> uh, no, the so many great spots. So Bobby got thrown through the. Uh, through through the uh, screen, uh, the Titan Tron again. That's right. Yes. Um, uh, sparks flew. That was that was pretty amazing. Actually. Yeah. Uh, there were some just incredible feats of strength. Uh, Braun Strowman gets a double suplex, a hanging double suplex. Yes, that's right. Uh, by Bobby and McIntyre. Um, my favorite spot of the night. Has to go to McIntyre, who was about to go, who was, this is close to the go home of the match. Mm -hmm. And him and Strowman are on the outside of the ring. And McIntyre is going for a Claymore kick. And he jumps and Strowman caught him. Caught him. This man is Damn near 300 pounds. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and just a big, big man. And he caught him like he was a luchador <laughs> and slammed him through the announce table. Yep. Yes, yes, he did. Absolutely amazing. Not to mention one more thing about uh, uh, McIntyre that I just happened to think of. I forgot that he pulled out a Michinoku driver. He did, yeah. On uh on Strowman. Now, folks, I love Taka Michinoku. I have always loved Taka Michinoku. And the only thing I liked more than Michinoku was the Michinoku driver. Yeah, it's a it's a and fun move. It is. It's fun, it's devastating, it's believable and it's and for that big man to put that move on another man, that that's just a that's a lot of meat being moved around that <laughs> ring. <clears throat> Jesus H, man, such a great match. Uh, Bobby came back, just barreled into the ring out of nowhere. Yeah, when after they, had, I forget which it which, was. At, it was right after the, the, uh, the table dry. spot. Right. Okay. And uh, boom, pops McIntyre for the uh, with the spear. Mm-hmm. Little lame, but the spear well, of it, all things. But it, it makes sense in context of Drew had just taken a massive hit. Yeah, and caught him with a spear. I just caught re- the three count. I just realized that. <laughs> it, 
Same kind of the same finish for the women's triple threat too. Yeah, champion yeah, out of champion out of nowhere retains. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's but that's the creativity of the of our story writers. Yeah. Um, fortunately, we had three solid workers in the ring oh, here yeah. that knew what to do and can get it going. So and uh, make us believe it. Believability is, I, I think, the key factor here, especially when it comes to wrestling in this day and age. Um, and something about all three of them just click together really well. I, yeah. It's like, and they seem like very willing to do, to work with each other. That's, I mean, uh, I believe uh, David Hensley's wife, Katie, uh, said it, uh, is it that took an insane amount of trust. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was, I mean, it was a great match. It was like with the Owen Zane match where the, the yes. stuff they were throwing at each other is like, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, these guys, these they, guys, these guys trust each other. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Bobby retains his championship. Um, my only question now is, where where we go with Bobby? Much like, and I have that same question for our main event coming up here in a minute. It's a bigger question for our main event. Yeah. Um, I gave this match a uh, four Meltzers. Yeah. Uh, great stuff. Great stuff. Um, moving into the main event, we have David Hensley's favorite wrestler, Roman Reigns. I don't know why you single him out. We we all have feelings about him. Yeah. I, don't, <laughs> I mean, everybody likes him. Yeah, that's that's the word I was thinking of. Before I uh, before I get started talking about this match. You know, I wouldn't be, uh, I, I couldn't do it justice if I didn't talk about some of the things that I read online. One tweet in particular uh-huh. made me very angry. Oh, I saw a couple too. I can't remember. I was, but I was browsing through the backlash tag. Ro- everything Roman Reigns touched in backlash turned to gold. So that Ces- one match? Cesaro was just along for the rod. Are you fucking kidding? <laughs> that was... How about that, huh? He's just there. He's just there. He didn't do anything. It rains did all the... <laughs> how about that? You wow. Believe, you believe to in that? To completely shut down the contributions of the other half of that match... The better half. The better half. The, uh, the guy who worked his ass the off. The only had the workhorse of the WWE, which yes. is Cesaro. Yes. I mean, the Swiss Superman. The for the love of God, man, are you kidding me? That's. I mean, and it's every time we get I together. I was expecting to hear something bad. I was not expecting to hear the absolutely shittiest take I could have heard on the match. Yeah. It, I again. This uh, it just goes to show you. Uh, maybe, maybe I don't know what's going on anymore, because I am clearly not watching the same match that they are. Now, don't get me wrong. I think Reigns looked great in this yes, match. He did up until the end. Yes, and it, even the end wasn't. All right, but he monologued again. He did monologue a couple of times, and okay, but I did enjoy a couple of parts because he started looking in, into the camera and just started <laughs> started shit talking, which was actually kind of fun. Yeah, those because he was like he was kind of laughing at it and just <laughs> and acceptable, acceptable. Yes. That's fine. Uh, that, that which <sighs> there wasn't any step to the side Shakespearean who am I moments. <laughs> The what what else was said? Uh, as a Roman Reigns is the greatest thing that WWE has ever seen in its uh, in its twenty years of existence. They're talking about just WWE. They're oh, not talking okay. about WWE. Still objectively false, but oh okay. yeah, I mean yeah, yeah. It took me a minute to figure that one out too. Uh, and I think they actually said like 18 years, whatever it was. Because Austin and The Rock were still active during the changeover to WWE. Right? What are you talking about? 
Roman Reigns would not say that about himself. No. I mean, it's... And, you know, the thing about it is, I really... I'm trying. I'm trying. I... Every time to. I get around David Hensley, I feel like all I'm de- doing is defending the SmackDown storyline to David Hensley. And You're not the only one because I got to, and I say this lovingly because he's a dear friend of ours and a dear friend of the pod. Right. I also got a dissertation from Robert Brafford about why the rain storyline is working that yeah. man is an apologist for so much <laughs> he he's doing a lot of work that he should be paid for by wwe that, oh don't get me started about payment bruce um, pritchard owes me so much goddamn money but it's, uh, here's the thing i know i'm not because i don't have the opportunity to watch smackdown so i know i'm missing a lot of things but i'm seeing the matches that they lead to yeah and i'm getting i'm getting caught up because they run endless um, you know, clip. You know, they 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 run endless uh, hype packages before the 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 actual show. Yeah. So it's like they're catching me up. They're showing me all the the highlights. They're, yeah, you're getting the things that you need to see. Yeah. Um. It's the the match was good. I, I'm I'm yeah. not it guys. I, I'm 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 shitting on everything right now. But the match was solid. Cesaro was in the zone. I mean, he had he had a fantastic match at Mania, and I'm not gonna say that he outdid himself, but he kept the volume up. He's more than ready for when they finally pull the trigger. If they pull the trigger, but see, here's the problem, Barnes. He got beat clean yes. in the middle of the damn ring. We didn't see Jimmy. We didn't see Jay. We didn't see any interference from Paul. That was one of my major problems with the match. Yeah. Is, and I, 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 I talked about this the last time. It's mm-hmm. like, so what's left? Yeah. What's left for Roman to do? What's left? You've made him the unstoppable. Mm-hmm. You've made him the dominant. You've given him so much in terms of accolades. Yeah. So what's left? What do you have Big to e. stand? What do you have to stand up against this? I mean, like I said, yeah, Cesaro got beat clean. So, and people were celebrating that on Twitter. It's like, yeah, Roman didn't need help. It was like, yeah, but in order to make a good story, yeah. he should have looked a little weak. Yeah, he should have looked worried that he couldn't do it, and so he took you know measures to, you know, uneven the odds. And sadly, I think I know what's about to happen. What's about to happen? Well, you know, instead of them going to Money in the Bank or something like that, June, they're going to Hell in the Cell. Right. Which, if you remember the last Hell in the Cell, that was Roman Reigns versus Jay. Uh Uh-huh. And now Jimmy's back. And Jimmy is very apprehensive about acknowledging the head of the table. Uh Uh-huh. I think we're going to do the same damn thing again. Against Jimmy this time? Against Jimmy this time. Because Jay came out and gave him the the necklace, and then Seth came out and attacked Cesaro. Yeah. We're going to do the same thing And then immediately people tweeted, I want to see Seth versus Roman because they're idiots. (laughs) <laughs> because it's like they clearly said something else up, but the new thing popped back up, so I want to see those two action figures fight. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired, dogs. <laughs> no. If we saw a Seth versus Roman match, how would we keep up with who's who? Because this is a complaint that I've had before, and I think I've vocalized it on this podcast. We need less white men with stringy, long black hair and beards. <laughs> Well, one one's a one's a shade or two darker than the other. Right. One wears uh, actual ring gear, and the other wears cargo pants. Yeah. How yeah. many pockets does their pants have? Oh, then that's Roman. I yeah. think they're done setting up Roman as a force to be reckoned with. They can now start putting cracks in the armor. Yeah. So, may I 
Please, I have thoughts. Absolutely. I wanted to express my thoughts on Roman Reigns in a manner that wasn't just me saying, God, I hate Roman Reigns, because nine out of ten times on this podcast, that is what I have ended up doing. And don't worry, it'll always be there. Okay. It will. And um, and we're out of time. I want to thank everybody for letting me <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, this is my podcast. <laughs> I'm sorry. Bitch, this is my network. You're right. <laughs> so on the way home after the um, podcast Sunday night, when I was taking Chris home, I told him, it feels to me like the the Roman Reigns storyline is what happens when bad writers don't know what to do with Superman. Mm-hmm. It's the Superman problem. He's impervious. How do you make a compelling story out of a character that has no flaws? Mm-hmm. Later, I realized the problem with that uh, analogy, with that comparison, is obviously Superman is a good guy. He would be a face. Mm -hmm. And Roman is doing his heel thing right now. So I think more accurately, the problem with the Roman Reigns storyline as it is now is in this scenario, Roman Reigns is shitty Thanos. Yeah. Yeah. The Avengers films, and I'm going to make this super fucking nerdy, but this is already a wrestling podcast, yeah, so bear with me. Uh, there's no, and, well, I mean, you'll have to work how, hard. How many there's, thresholds do you want to cross right. here? I mean, I mean, you'll have to be careful. There's no crossover between wrestling and comics. So. Right. <laughs> so the MCU spent many movies establishing Thanos as a credible threat to the Avengers. Infinity War comes along after so many movies where the film ends with a great big battle and the villain is defeated, Infinity War happens and the villain wins. Mm-hmm. He snaps his fingers, half of the universe disappears, and fans of the movies and the characters are devastated. But we all know next year we've got Avengers Endgame. Right. That's going to come out. All the heroes are going to get together together. They're going to defeat Thanos. So imagine how pissed Marvel fans would be if Endgame happened and we get to the big battle and Captain America's got Mjolnir and Spider-Man is swinging around with the Infinity Gauntlet and Captain Marvel shows up and she flies through Thanos' ship and destroys it. Mm -hmm. All these things are happening and then Thanos snaps his fingers again and all the heroes disappear. Yeah. Okay, well, obviously that means we're getting Avengers 5 next year. So something else is going to happen, and they're all going to have to get together. Mm -hmm. And that happens, and then Thanos snaps his fingers a third time, and everyone disappears. So now we're on Avengers 6, Avengers Backlash. (laughs) And everyone gets together, and at the end of the battle, Tony Stark handcuffs Thanos to something and then has to Robert Downey Jr. has to lay down on the ground and sell like he's hurt while Paul Heyman comes out to unhandcuff Thanos and then Tony Stark just keeps selling until Thanos can snap his fingers again and the heroes all disappear but it's okay because we've got Avengers 6 next month (laughs) 7 it's 7 yeah Avengers Mania (laughs) Except at least in the case of the Avengers, Thanos... Money on the Thanos. Yeah. At least in the case of the Avengers, we have got Thanos played by Josh Brolin, a very talented and charismatic actor, whereas Roman Reigns is played by whoever it is that Roman Reigns really is. Jason Momoa. Yeah. Shitty Jason Momoa, (laughs) who is not charismatic. No. No, Mm -hmm. he's not. That, to me, is what is most frustrating, Mm -hmm. is, like Chris said, what's next? Like we've all said, what what credible threat is there now? How many people, how many other wrestlers do you have to job out to Reigns? It's funny that you uh, bring that up, Hensley. Um, I, I... Pulled this up just because I thought we were going to go here tonight. Um, I'm looking through the roster of people. Now, somebody said, well, they got to be on SmackDown or else it's not. No, 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 no. Waking, you can run this. Um, You check your basic top 10. You got one guy. Big E. You've also got Sheamus, 
But let's call a spade a spade here. That ain't going to happen. I think we all know that's we tried to run Sheamus with the title. It didn't work. Uh, we gave it hell. It didn't work. Uh, Big E's our guy. You know what the worst part is? Hmm. And I... It was it was especially bad watching the match and looking over at Dave because Dave was visibly expressing what I felt deep inside yeah. the whole match, and that was because I saw I saw for the briefest of moments what I felt inside, and that was a glimmer of hope. Mm-hmm. It was a little bit, and I knew by now I can't let it flourish. I can't let it blossom into anything beyond well maybe until the end of the match. Because they've taken that from me so many times. Yeah. Well, and I asked the room once the match was over, did, was anyone surprised? No. No. Did anyone no. honestly see Cesaro pulling out a win? And you you called me pessimistic afterwards when I <laughs> pointed this I out. Did. But all the great spots that Cesaro did got the people in the room we were in so hyped. And they were yeah. so excited and cheering. I couldn't cheer. I mm-hmm. saw that. I was watching. Because I knew exactly how this was going to turn out. Yeah. To me, there was nothing to... Yeah, they were great spots. Cesaro did a great job. There was nothing to get excited about when we all knew exactly how it was going to end. Right. I mean, unless there's a spot in the in the match where he finally loses, where someone just actively breaks his fucking arm, I don't see how I'm going to get hype and feel hope that this is it, this is the one, until there's a three count or a submission, yeah. and I see the belt actually get handed to the other person. Yeah. Right. I don't get to have any sort of thrill until afterward. Yeah. But let's look at it. Let's I don't want to. Who, I've been looking at it. Who uh, who is Who is left that can run the main event. We've got Shinsuke, but I think we all know that's not going to... Dave that, made gonna, the most apt analogy. It, it was. Roman it, has snapped his fingers. He and, will, and he will snap his fingers for Shinsuke. He will... You better believe he's going to snap his fingers if it's Damian Priest, because... He's not ready. Damian Priest... Just got out of a zombie match. He's, he's also not ready. He's not. No, he's not. He's not ready. Um, Seth Rollins is a heel. Right. And uh, that's part of the problem is both creative and a lot of fans don't even care about a, a, a good hero versus villain story anymore. They would just want the guy they like. Yeah. And it's like, I want the, it's like, I'm a little old fashioned in the way I was like, I think. Boy, calm, he's calm yourself, Dave. Calm yourself. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Kicked my own desk. My bad. I just, I, 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 at my core, it, I'm always happy when it's a good guy triumphing over a bad guy. The, the most basic of feel good storytelling. Mm-hmm. And admittedly, I know in order to build a good story and build something to a proper conclusion, it's gotta, it's it's gotta, you know, get past that every once in, every once in a while, and to, and to culminate into what is hopefully but let's, a, an ultimate victory. And let's take an even deeper look at that. Uh huh. Let's look at who our real baby faces are on both rosters. Okay, Cesaro, who's actually top of our list right now. Yes. For baby faces, he just got beat clean. Okay, who's next? We got Big E. We, we've been talking about that. Strowman, not really a clean-cut baby face. No, he's just kind of an active threat. I, I, he's kind of, when, when you're kind of like the monster type that he plays, mm-hmm. it's never really good or bad. It's just he wants the thing he wants, and if you're in the way, you're in trouble. Yeah, I would love to watch Strowman toss Reigns around the ring, yeah. but I just know that it would end until with... he clamps his arms around his neck and makes him fought, pass out. Yeah. But let's also keep in mind how many times have we seen Strowman versus Roman Reigns? We've it's happened. I blocked a, it out of my memory. Apparently. We've seen that a lot. This is back when when Strowman was picking up ambulances and stuff. Oh right, yeah, right. yeah, that that whole thing. Um. We've got Drew McIntyre. 
He's a clean cut baby face. Uh, but like I said, the blooms off the rose. They for tried that it. one. Yeah. Orton. It's not there. Riddle. No. <laughs> right. Just no. No. Just damn it. No. <laughs> I want to, I, I want something I can feel good about. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, Alistair, Alistair Black has come back. Um, a, he's not ready. B, he's got to finish writing that story. <laughs> we, yeah, we we got to... We don't know what he is, so he's out. Damien Priest is out of... Uh, has just got through zombies. Keith Lee is just gone because Vince doesn't like fat people. Um, You know, we could go with... If we wanted to, we could have uh, T Bar take his uh, face paint and mask off and be Dominic Dijakovic. No, that won't happen. They no, won't let it happen. It would. No, they won't. They won't let it happen. Um, it's not, it's, Dominic Dijakovic isn't as marketable, marketable as T Bar. And and I hate to say this, but here's what's really gonna happen: the person that just most recently has come back. Eva Marie? More recent. <laughs> More recent than that. Hey. And when I say this is going to be the guy, I'm talking about a former world heavyweight champion. I'm talking about a guy that now has a fresh new stable. Jinder Mahal? I am talking about Jinder Mahal. Jinder Mawai. <laughs> that's that's going to be our guy. It's Well, that's going to be their guy. He's going to be the guy. He's going to be the latest conquest. Yeah. I have seen... We, we all joked about this among mm-hmm. ourselves, um, but I have seen people online seriously floating the idea that uh, it's going to be come down to a pick-your-favorite-child match uh between mm-hmm. Reigns and Lesnar. Uh, With Big Daddy this, Paul Heyman having to choose. At this point, I ain't gonna lie to you, I would take Lesnar. I would. I would take Lesnar as well, yeah. Yeah. It's you know, no charisma versus even less charisma. Because Lesnar won't speak at all. Yeah, he'll just stand back, let he'll Paul stand, do his job. He'll, he will do Exactly what he's supposed to do, which is go in there to quote Roman Reigns' t shirt. He will go in, conquer, and leave. And that that'll be and as it's, much as it pains me to say it, that's acceptable right it's now. It's angry that that would be refreshing <clears throat> to me right now. Yeah. 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 But we're in the minority because people fucking love Reigns. They do. They love him. And I can't figure it out. I'm never going to forget that tweet. Cesaro was just along for the ride. Well, they said the same thing about Kevin Owens. Yeah. Oh, they said. <laughs> oh, God, that one made me mad. Too. Oh, I quoted the Kanye tweet that that that. Uh, Katie oh. was talking about that Kanye was going to put Paul McCartney on the man. He's about to make Paul McCartney blow up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The one with Kevin Owens was he made Kevin Owens look like a credible superstar. Oh my God. And I want to find these people and look at their tweets and be and whenever they complain about anything WWE does, I was like, this is what you deserve. This is what you ask for. Yeah. And see, and the thing about it is, I would forgive a lot of that if these were like, ah, this is a 15-year-old kid. This is a 12-year-old. These you are know, adults. Is, 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 no, these, these, these are 20 and 30-year-old adults that are saying these things. you got to be kidding me, This man. is why people think wrestling fans are stupid. <laughs> yeah. And at this point, still watching it, we maybe we are. It's, <laughs> I mean... Look, it's something you know, to do. It's, it's, it's like eating ice cream, and you get an ice cream headache, and then you eat more ice cream. It's. <laughs> I would I would agree if we were just if I was just on my own, but it's it, as a group it hits different. Yeah, and in <laughs> we this, struggle together. The the it's it's shit flavored ice cream. For <laughs> well, hell, after Sunday night, I was like, I need to start looking at these cards beforehand, and if Reigns is wrestling, I should just not come over and watch. Yeah. 
I, oh boy, you're, I, we're never going to see you again for a pay per view because <laughs> I haven't seen a Reigns match since he came back that mm-hmm. didn't piss me off. Yeah, yeah. And see now, there. Part of me says, you know what? That's a good thing, Hensley, because you hate him and you want to see him get his ass kicked. But the heat's different. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not the right heat that we're looking for. Yeah, if you hate MJF. We know why you hate MJF, because he's a cocky, annoying son of a bitch. But you're not going to say anything about him wrestling bad. Right. Right. You're not going to say his promos are shit. And I haven't gotten invested in wrestling storylines enough to be like, that's a heel and I hate him. Mm -hmm. I don't hate Reigns. Because he's a heel and I'm supposed to. Yeah. I hate Reigns because he's a shitty wrestler and a shitty performer who tries to force things like crying and monologuing and getting caught in handcuffs. And I will, I've, I've said this for a while. Let's keep the heel thing because the heel thing I think is good. The heel thing actively plays to his strengths. Right. It, It, that was the smart thing they did. And let's get him a tag team partner. Let's mask the fact that let, let's mask what he's losing. Well, what did we do with the shield? Yeah. Because I, I, I was speaking to uh, uh, Shelby Ray from this is a takeover uh, Sunday after the pay-per-view. And I was like, you know, um, this is a little bit our fault. The when I say that the the WWE oh, universe, so it's your fault. Because when yeah, the is. shield was in its prime, we looked at the shield. We saw Dean Ambrose. We saw Seth Rollins. And we saw Roman Reigns. And we saw that big motherfucker hop over the top rope and do that little, that badass little roll that he did. And he throws the Superman punch. And we all collectively, I'm guilty. I did it too, said Roman Reigns is the guy. That's our guy. We did that. We absolutely did that. But then, but the thing about it is, he was masked by the shield. He was covered up. He was protected. And then when you took the cover off, you get shitty Thanos. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, and you saw oh. Well, it was like it was a feeling of oh man. Imagine what it'd be like when he's on his own and he's just unleashed, and then it turns out. Oh, that spear and that Superman punch, that's 80% of what he does. Yeah, that's all he's got. That is. (laughs) Oh, this is not, this this isn't good. (laughs) No. We've made a terrible mistake. And I'm fine with us making mistakes, but we need to correct them. But by that point, upper management had latched on and be like, this is the guy. And we're going to keep giving just, like he's a, like whenever, I said it on Sunday, whenever he stops, Roman's a lock for the hall. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's, there's, yeah. no there, there's no way he's not. There's no way he's not. Yeah, yeah, that, that's gonna happen. The sheer amount of things they've let him accomplish. Yeah, and they keep doing it. I think we've made our point here. Tonight. I think so. Yeah. Um, Reigns so, goes over. Reigns goes over. Um, I did give the match a three. Yeah, uh, it was a great match until uh, it wasn't. Yeah. Until it wasn't, <laughs> and two and a half of that belongs to Cesaro. Yes, yeah, I'd say two and three quarters belong to Cesaro. Uh, <laughs> Roman was along for the ride. And, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, oh, yeah, no, yeah. No. no, I agree with that. I'll say, I'll say two and a half belongs to Cesaro. A quarter of that is Paul's facial expressions. <laughs> yeah, him looking exasperated at ringside. Yeah, never gets old. So let me ask you, Chris Barnes. Um, if I had to give an MVP uh, this evening, um, I'm definitely going to give it to Drew McIntyre just because of the amazing spots that I saw in that triple threat. Uh, I want to ask you, best dressed, what do you have? Best dressed. Honestly, I like Rhea Ripley's look. Rhea Ripley, okay. Yeah, there... Uh, there, there were. I mean, there were a lot of good outfits that night, especially uh, Seth Rollins. Oh God, the that suit. <laughs> that suit hurt me. Like <laughs> that suit was something. Um, but yeah, I like Ray Ripley's outfit, and I was especially I was thinking about that because I, out of nowhere on Twitter, I saw people 
giving grief about her look. And I was like, why? She looks like yeah. she's, she looks like a stone cold badass. Like, yeah. She like looks, a, she looks great. A goddamn nightmare. <laughs> she looks believable yeah. yeah. again. And that's the, again, I hate to keep beating this dead horse, but, uh, that's, I think that's our main problem with Roman Reigns is it's not believable. It's, it's not. just not. We believed it for a little while with the shield, but we don't anymore. I can sum my my feelings up in two words: Why him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, but I will tie Rhea Ripley with uh, Rey Mysterio's uh, old school Batman look. Oh, there you go. That's right. Yeah, that was a fine outfit. Yeah. Now, what do you have for worst dress? It would be easy to say Roman because it continues to be a problem. But at least we have new music for Roman. I did hear it for the first time. It doesn't match. <laughs> the, the thing is, yeah, that's for a guy who who would be more like ostentatious, like Seth Rollins. That's right. that's like the yeah. Messiah music. Yeah, kind of. That's it. Doesn't match. I'll I'll take it because it's not. No, 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 no. It's not. It's not that. So I'll take it. But I think we could have done better. Oh, right? you definitely definitely could have done better. Um. Oh, sh- I had it and I lost it. I, I I honestly had someone as a lock for worst dress and I couldn't. Was it one of the ladies from the Triple Threat? No, I, no, it's not Charlotte. Even though, <laughs> even though I have I have some re- re- reservations about it, but uh, a lot of good puns came out of that. <laughs> uh, well, what about uh, any anybody from uh, from the man from the men's Triple Threat? Uh no, I, I mean I'm not I'm still not super sold on bronze, right? But it it uh, it it's at least it's complete and it makes sense in matches. Yeah, it's not. Uh, Ricochet's wasn't much better, but it, it, Ricochet looked like Baron Corbin. Ricochet was at least it, it gave me this impression of oh it was spur of the moment. I don't know why he was wearing that at any given moment. The dress but. shoes is what bothers me more than <laughs> anything. I'm okay with but the you, jeans, but the dress shoes. But you know why? Probably. Hmm. Um. Probably because dress shoes also kind of have that same function as. Uh, Wrestling boots—they don't have treads on them. That's true. That's true. So if it was like you know made to look like spur of the moment mm-hmm. dress shoes, probably do. dress shoes are also responsible for that amazing uh, people's elbow that Rock did to the British Bulldog, the one where he just glides. Uh, You're <laughs> right about that. <laughs> but oh god, it, it it's bugging me because I was like, that's the person, that's the person, and it's just like, I'm angry. I am just. <laughs> Well, while you're thinking yeah, about it, go we're going to go Dave. to David Hensley, your best performance of the evening, sir. You're not going to believe it, but I'm actually going to say Jay Uso for having to sell that I'm feeling apprehensive about being this guy's bitch. Yeah. Right on. Okay. Uh, yeah, I believe you mean Jimmy. Oh, is it Jimmy Uso? Yeah, well, no, Jimmy's J- the one that just came back and is no, no. apprehensive. Uh, no, no, I mean Jay for starting to show some cracks in the. Uh, oh, okay, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He still came out and gave the necklace, but he's he's wavering. Yeah, a mm-hmm. little bit because he's talking to his brother a yeah. little bit, and there getting in his head. And yeah. you know, at, and uh, and even though he he let uh, Jay pick up the scraps at the end of the match. He's like, you know, Roman's gonna have, gonna at some point try to get Jimmy out of the picture, and that's gonna make probably make Jay turn. Right now, what about worst performance? I don't think I have to answer that. I kind of figured, but I've got my worst now because I don't know how. It's like Miz, Miz, <laughs> Miz's ensemble is the. Deve- oh, it, that's right, the big. Uh, it's it. Oh, it. He looks the, like the oversized zipper. Yeah, he, it's somewhere between anime and he skinned some of the Muppets from Dr. Teeth and the electric. <laughs> I, I, I just, it's it's taking on a weird eldritch-like life of its own. Right. <laughs> right on. Okay, so very quickly, I'm going to run over our top ten. I've run them com- over. I've combined uh, the men and women with the top ten, so uh, just uh, for time uh, constraints. Mm-hmm. Uh, so coming in at number 10, brand new to the countdown, uh, we have Walter from Imperium. Uh, number nine is Kenny Omega from AEW, who uh, better known as the belt collector nowadays. Uh, number eight, Raquel Gonzalez from NXT. Uh, number seven is our WWE champion, Bobby Lashley. Number six, 
our women's champion from Raw, or I'm sorry, SmackDown, uh, Bianca Belair, or, or did it? Is it Raw? No, no, it's SmackDown. No, it, yeah, it's SmackDown. Okay, okay. Um, number five is our Raw champion, Rhea Ripley. Number four is who the man who I believe can save wrestling right now, and that would be none other than Maxwell Jacob Friedman. Uh, number three, uh, another NXT guy, Karrion Cross, who dropped down uh, from the from our last countdown. He was at number one, um, and number two, Cesaro. Mm-hmm. Uh, Made it on to the all jumped from being obscure in the top ten all the way to number two. Uh, however, sadly, that leaves uh, the number one spot for our universal champion. Not the my head champion. Of the table. Not <laughs> my champion. Roman freaking reigns. Uh, and let's move into the tag teams real quick. When it rains, it Roman reigns. <laughs> number ten, Imperium. Uh, from NXT, also uh, number nine, also from NXT, MSK. God, I love these guys. Um, number eight is always great. The Dark Order, still <laughs> hanging hard on the countdown. Um, I haven't put these guys' stats in yet. They may be off the countdown now. But number seven uh, are the former tag team champions, the Dirty Dogs. Um Number six of the missing Raw champions, AJ Styles and Almost, haven't even seen them. Hmm. Uh, they just took the belts and left. They went. They went to go party, like they said. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number five is the Gun Club. Weird that they made it on the countdown. Um, that's a, that one's just odd to me. Uh, they're not really featured in Dynamite or anything, uh-huh. but they've been making such a show in Elevation and Dark uh, that they popped up here. Uh, number four, uh, we have the newly formed stable of Pinnacle. Uh, Pinnacle. Yeah. Mainly they're talking about FTR on this one. Right. Uh, number two is the recently defunct SoCal Uncensored. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, the, they'll be off the countdown probably the next time you see them. Uh, n- uh, number two, the Young Bucks, which leaves number one, should be champions, FTR. And those are our countdowns. We'll probably do them again in another, uh, probably around October, and uh, we'll get those again. Uh so yeah, that's that's about it. We've got uh, we've got a double or nothing coming up, and not next week, but the next. Mm. So that's gonna we'll we'll be getting ready for that one. Uh, what's going on with NXT and Long Walk uh, talks? I believe Shelby texted me to say that there was an NXT takeover coming up in June. Mm-hmm. And on Long Walk Talks, this week we're going to be continuing our Kevin Smith filmography discussion by talking about Clerks, the animated series. Yeah. And then next week, that will also continue where we're talking about Clerks 2 before we round out the, the View Universe with Jay and Silent Bob reboot next month in June. Right on. Now, let me ask you a question, David. Uh we we haven't heard from uh, Lone Walk Teeny Talks in a while. What's we have going it. on, man? Um, Katie and I were talking about that the other day. We need to sit down and just record a couple because that's what we had yeah. done. We usually will sit down and we'll record two at a time, and I'll space them out to where, um, you know, if we have an off week where we're not doing Long Walk Talks or Takeover or this is a work, I'll put them in there. Um, but I mean, just the last month for me has been super busy with work and Katie was in a show, so she was That's in rehearsal. True. So we just haven't really had time to sit down and record any. Well, but, you need to. You're denying us the one of the best things we have going. I yeah. know. Yeah. I know. Right she there has next a, to... Uh, this is a takeover. This is a takeover. <laughs> yeah. Our two most listened to podcasts on yeah. the network. Yep. Yeah. So that's what we got. Uh, dogs. 
if people want to reach out to you online or follow you online, where's the best place for them to do that at? Well, I mean, honestly, your guess is as good as mine. I haven't been on... uh uh, social media a ton here recently not for any particular reason it just uh it just hasn't hit my radar if you want to you can follow me at immortal two dogs on twitter uh you can hit me up on uh this is a work podcast on instagram and uh if you feel like hunting me down on facebook uh i might friend you i might not just depends on where i'm at in the world <laughs> And Chris, what about you? If people want to reach out to you online, where can they go to do that? Well, any complaints can be sent on Twitter directly to at this underscore pod. Uh, and, uh, just tell them Chris sent you. <laughs> All right. Well, like Chris said, if you want to keep up with this is a takeover. Oh, did I accidentally read theirs instead? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. If you want to keep up with this is, Shelby Ray and Gina Belmont uh, from This Is This a Is a Very Unfunny Theme That You've Started. What do you mean? Just because I read yours first? Yes. <laughs> oh, you can follow the This Is a Takeover crew on this underscore pond. And I recently handed over the reins of the... Uh, long walk podcast twitter to shelby ray because she's so much better at social media than i am thank you shelby uh you can follow long walk podcast on twitter at long walk podcast singular see you're making your answer for your crimes too yep (laughs) and then if you want to follow me personally the best place to do that is on instagram at db hensley Uh, If you want to see some of our uh, more original content or listen to a backlog of our older episodes, those links to YouTube are available in the show notes. And to find out more about Long Walk Productions, you can visit us online at longwalk.us. And as always, if you enjoy this show, please make sure to leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform you are listening on. And guys from David Hensley and Chris Barnes and all of us here at This Is A Work. This is David Two Dogs Hayes saying, guys, if you got out of bed today and you had a job to go to and you had somebody that cares about you when you get home, folks, this match is over and you just won via pinfall. Thank you for listening to This Is A Work. I still don't remember the name of the zombie movie, so mission failed. Zombies. Zombies.